McCain faced voters at a town hall today in Arizona. Moments ago, Senator McCain went on the record. Senator McCain, it's nice to see you, sir. Thank you, Greta. It's nice to be with you. I'm sorry I was a few minutes late. There's uh, construction delays. I apologize. I think they call that shovel-ready stimulus projects in some parts there of the nation. There you go. There you go. There you go. Senator, I heard that you called a town hall meeting, or actually I read it, uh, a peaceful revolt. Um, is that what you uh, think these are? I think what's happening in the country is a peaceful re revolt uh, that is uh, sort of ignited because of the uh, incredible generational theft we've considered, we've committed with all the spending and the trillions of dollars of debt, and now a new estimate of two trillion, two trillion more in the next ten years, and people are uh, very nervous and uh, very upset about that. And then you have a government-mandated health care plan that uh, it costs a trillion or two more, and I think Americans are finally in probably one of the most unusual ways I've ever seen stand up and saying enough. All right, you had a town hall meeting. Were you able to make them feel any better? You say that they're upset about the projection on the 10-year deficit and health care costs. Do they feel any better after the town hall meeting? I don't know if they feel any better. I hope that uh, all of us, including me, gains a better understanding of the issues and challenges that they face, that uh, the public option, which is really a government option, is not uh, something that uh, it would do anything but lead to a government takeover of health care in America. Um, they are very concerned, of course, about many of the aspects of the issue, but they quote, public option, and I use quotes because it's really the government option I think people are really very concerned about. Is there any way you would vote for a health care reform plan that had a government slash public option in it? No. I, I couldn't do that. I think, you know, the Hippocratic Oath is first do no harm. Uh, we would do great harm because uh, there's no doubt in my mind that this, quote, public option would uh, sooner or later take over and overwhelm the health care system. If it was just another po uh, insurance policy, then we would have 1,501 opportunities. But really what it is is something that over time I think would deprive people of choice. Uh, one of the, a young woman stood up at uh, this town hall meeting and she said, I get the sense that we're losing our freedom. And in a way, when you're talking about freedom to choose your health care provider, your doctor, uh, your, your medicine, and all of those things, in a way, uh, certainly her, her freedom in, in a, and many Americans is at risk here. Well, there's no secret the Democrats have the math in terms of if they wanted to pass this, if they got all the Democrats in the House, actually they could lose some, um, and even in the Senate as well. Have you spoken to any U.S. senators that sort of pulled you aside and say, listen, uh, I don't like that government slash public option either. I don't know if I can go for it. Well, a lot of them have pulled me aside, both Democrats and Republicans, and said, can't we work something out? And I think we can. I mean, look, Medicare is going broke. Social Security is going broke, but Medicare is going broke, and we have to fix it. But we have to fix it through incentives, through rewards, through elimination of waste and mismanagement, through uh, malpra medical malpractice reform, and many other changes that I think we could all unite behind. But if the Democrats insist on this, quote, public uh, option, um, I, uh, no, I couldn't never support so It would have to be off the table. Has President Obama listened to you or Republicans, or is it just say this is sort of my way and try to roll over the Republicans, or is he listening and considering what, uh, what you might want to uh, do about this reform? Well, I think the president is obviously torn between the left of his party that are saying that there's no solution except for the public option, and then there's, of course, the center that is also becoming more and more nervous because they are hearing from their constituents. It's, it's not clear to me where the president will go. One of the things he might do is come up with a proposal of his own. But again, I repeat, I know that Republicans are willing to try to help to put incentives in wellness and fitness, to reform medical malpractice reform, to uh, have a w broader choice and range of options such as purchase of health insurance across state lines and many other changes that I think we could agree on, but not a big government solution. 
I suspect that you probably know better than anyone else what uh, President Obama said during the election run-up. Is there anything that he is saying or doing now as with regard to health care reform that's something you've never heard before during the run-up or which is a big, uh, big change? No, except that the president continues to say that if you like your health insurance policy, you can keep it. And if you have the public option and some of the proposals that are passed through the Senate Help Committee that I'm a member of and is about to be voted on the House, you can't keep your insurance pol health insurance policy. It would fundamentally change. Why does he, does he, does he believe that or just doesn't, I mean, why do you think he's saying that? Because he simply disagrees with you or he has different information or he's just dead wrong or why is he saying that? I think he must have bad information. Um, and I think that, look, I, I respect the president. I respect the results of the election. The fact is that the president was for this, quote, public option many years ago. And he does have a very liberal, big government voting record. And that's where we have just fundamental philosophical differences. I say that with respect. You say fundamental philosophical differences, but we see a lot of them reflected in town hall meetings. Senator Feingold said earlier that he thought that, it was, I, I'm paraphrasing, these are my words, but some of the effect that he, uh, he would be surprised or if, if there were a health care reform bill by Christmas. Is this going to happen, this health care bill reform, at least as we now understand to be the proposal on the table? I don't know. I'm very disturbed to hear recent, uh, and it's only in the media because I'm not consulted, information that perhaps the, uh, uh, the Democrats would bring up this so-called reconciliation, which uh, means that you could pass significant legislation with only 51 votes. Uh, that would set a terrible precedent. I think it would blow up the Senate. I think it would uh, fundamentally change the way the institution functions. But I also think the Democrats believe that they don't want to repeat the failure of Clinton Care, the proposal by President and Mrs. then Mrs. Clinton, uh, now Secretary of State Clinton, back in 1993-94. So uh, I don't know what they're going to do, but if they go to the 51 vote route, I think it would have devastating consequences. But there are a lot of even Democratic U.S. senators that aren't in favor of that, isn't that right? Well, I hope so. I I, I hope so. Um, uh, but. I am not, I'm not, not sure. It's, it's obvious that some Democrats have been leaking that that proposal has, is under consideration. Senator, thank you very much for joining us, sir. Thanks for having me on, Greta. This is one of the most interesting times of all the years I've been there. It is indeed fascinating. Thank you, sir. And important, I might add. Thank you.